I thought I'd try something new today and just do a bit of a spotlight on a specific species. This is one that I've really enjoyed keeping. I find it really fascinating. There's loads of interesting things about it. So let's get this species out and just have a look. So the species in question is a Silnia humoralis or the wide-armed mantis. I haven't got this girl out for a while, so I'm not sure what her temperament will be like. As you can see, she's got these awesome spots on the inside of her raptorial arms. The first thing you'll probably notice is the size of those raptorial arms. Which is why they're more commonly known as the wide-armed mantis. I think the coolest thing about these is just the morphs that they go through and the coloration and the difference between each molt is really striking. Their locality is Ethiopia, Mozambique, South Africa and Nambia. The females, which this one is, will get to around 8 centimetres long, which is about one molt away now. I think she's almost at her adulthood stage. I believe she'll get her wings on the next molt. The males are slightly smaller at 5 to 6 centimetres. Humidity wise, they should be kept at about 50 to 70 percent and temperature wise is 75 to 85 Fahrenheit or 24 to 29 degrees centigrade. So they're a fairly hardy species to keep. Uh, you can't really go wrong with them. I'm not certainly not had any issues with mine. Feeding wise, they'll take pretty much anything. Uh, the only thing I wouldn't give them for obvious reasons is crickets. As just a general rule, we should stay away from crickets with mantids because it can cause all kinds of problems. But I primarily keep this girl on flies, which she seems to take willingly. Throughout her stages of life, I've just went from fruit flies onto house flies, blue bottles slowly getting bigger, and now she just takes the blue bottles primarily. So the best thing I've seen about this species is just the difference in the colours, as I said before. The females are definitely a bit more vibrant, as you can see on this one, she's just this really nice kind of jade green colour, which is awesome, with sort of white, white and yellow on her raptoral arms and that spot on the inside. The males are similar, but they're just a bit darker, more brown coloured. Uh, but she's gone through all kinds of stages. You know, at one point she was green, I think, when I first got her. Then she went to brown. Then she kind of went to this mottly green and brown colour with stripy legs. And now, as you can see, she's kind of primarily this jade green colour with the yellow on her raptors. I've seen reports as well that they're an aggressive species. Uh, and that's kind of how I touted it when I first got her in one of my videos ages ago now. But I've never had any, and never seen any signs of that. She's never been aggressive to the point of showing off any kind of display. Uh, she's never seen overly ambitious when it comes to hunting. It's just, you know, she seems more of a sit and wait kind of mantis, if anything, rather than actively hunting the prey when she spots it. I'm sure they can differ between from mantis to mantis, but yeah, never seen any signs of that from this girl at least. And as you can see, when I got her out, she's very timid, not skittish or anything. They don't move around a whole lot, these ones. I mean, I know most don't anyway as standard with mantids but yeah she's very very stoic just sits in the cage you don't see much movement at all so if you want something that's a bit more active then maybe it's not the one for you but for looks wise i'd certainly give her a 10 out of 10 just because of the color morphs and the cool big chunky raptors that she's got always eats just fine and like i said just a generally hardy species the other thing about this species and it's yet to be seen to be confirmed but there is reports as well that it's parthenogenic which means that she could lay an Uthika and the young that come out would be clones of her effectively. So she might not even need a mate to be able to reproduce. Don't know how I feel about that. It would be awesome to see and it'd be really fascinating. But like I've said before, I don't know if I want to go down the whole breeding route and ending up with 200 baby mantid nymphs and then needing to you know, get rid of them to other people or sell them or whatever. It's just that it sounds like a lot of hassle, so I kind of hope she doesn't do that. But at the same time, it would be quite a cool thing to see. The reports of it happening, though, are just so few and far between. I don't know how much to rely on that. It might just be have been a one-off or somebody misrecorded it or something. Who knows? But we'll, we'll wait and see because she's reaching maturity now, so it won't be long before she does start laying ooths. And we'll keep them in the right temperature just, to, just in case, but time will tell with this girl. But let's get a fly, give her one of those, and just see her feed in response. The question is, is she going to want this to warm up a bit before she takes it? I think so. Oh, 
slight interest. Now as you might have seen in previous vids, they don't tend to be too keen on the flies when they're not moving. God, that was a wild takedown. I thought I'd hurt her there. But thankfully she just kind of leapt for it when I took it away and managed to get it. So I guess we can probably keep that clip. I was just worried I'd hurt her, but she's absolutely fine. Uh, as you can see, she's enjoying that fly there. Absolutely ravenous. And I guess that she does have a good feeding response, even if they aren't moving, clearly. I mean, that was quite opportunistic, wasn't it? She must have thought it was flying away and she was going to lose her chance, so she absolutely dived for it. I don't know how well that came out on the camera, because she probably jumped off screen, but... Yeah. There's no messing with this girl. And this kind of shows off how cool those raptors look as well. Just awesome how it kind of fades from that jade green colour into the yellow. And she's definitely making short work of this fly. And that's our in-depth look at the Silnia humoralis. Let me know what you thought of this format because I think I'd like to do more of these, just having a more detailed look into each species and the husbandry around them. But I hope you learned something if you were interested in keeping one of these mantids. And until next time, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one.